What I don't want to do a lot this offseason is talk about how I think this position group's going to be a lot better. That I don't want to overdo that and be like, hey, I think the pass rushers are going to be better. I think the, the wide receivers are going to be better. I already talked about how I think the wide receivers could be better. Ultimately, they don't have the top-level guys. As an overall group, it might be a better group this time. I do think that about the running backs, though. I do think that Georgia's running back room will be better in 2024, and I promise. Keep track of me. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think this position room, that all these position rooms are going to be better. I do think some of them are going to be good. I think the offensive line room will be about the same. I think the secondary will probably be a little bit worse, right? So uh, the tight ends will be worse. So it does teeter off. But Georgia's running backs, to get to the point a little bit quicker, I think are going to be better off in 2024 than they were in 2023. Kendall Milton and Dejan Edwards were a very good duo, right? And they both had over 800 yards, around 800 yards last year. They combined for 26, 27 total touchdowns, and they weren't really healthy. And that's something that might make a little bit, not a little bit, but a lot of a difference for Georgia this season. Those guys just weren't healthy. And it was, it hurt them at the beginning of the season. Um, Dylan Bell is a wide receiver. Yes, he's a football player and he can play more than one position. And he, he's a pretty good running back, but that's not plan A and it's not plan B. I think that Branson Robinson's injury I, maybe got looked over a little bit, saying, wow, man, how different would it have been if they had that guy too? Where the pressure wouldn't have been on Milton and Edwards to be to get healthy as fast as they needed to, right? Or they would have had at least another healthy scholarship back in the rotation, but not just uh, another healthy scholarship back, another healthy scholarship back that I think has you know thousand yard season potential. Not not really this year. I don't. I'm not going to predict that for Branson Robinson a thousand yard season at the moment. But he's a guy that could be a thousand yard rusher for Georgia at some point in time. And that's part of my point. Trevor Etienne, the addition of him is going to be a big deal for Georgia. He is going to be one of the better running backs in college football this season. ESPN, when they released their position rankings, they had him as the eighth best back in the country and the best back in the conference. So Etienne will be one of the better ones across the nation. And I think he can have a thousand yard season for sure. If he ends up being the lead running back now, Is he going to get enough touches to do that? I don't know. But I do think that Etan will end up being the lead running back for Georgia. I don't know if it will be super close either. Like, I think he will will definitely outpace the others. But it will be a committee running back room. Practice the other day. Branson Robinson, he was completely dressed out. And I'll give you a little bit more about his injury status here in a second. Ryan Curley from Dog Post talking about Georgia's running back room. Have talked about it. A little bit this offseason, but I want to add a little bit more spice to the conversation now that I've got to see him practice, now that Kirby Smart has addressed the media for the first time since the Orange Bowl, at least the local Athens media and the Georgia football media. So, I think they're going to be better. I think they'll be better. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a pause there. Just because I think they'll have more healthy backs that have played, right? Right? After Milton and Edwards, Robinson was out. Well, Cash Jones really hadn't played. That's who they had in their depth. Andrew Paul really hadn't played and was coming off of an injury. Roger Robinson, true freshman, hadn't played. He ends up getting hurt as well. Ankle injury. This year, if healthy, if healthy, will Branson Robinson be 100% of what he is by the time the season starts? I don't think so. But I think he's going to be ready to be playing football by the time the season starts. And he'll be a couple months removed from being clear. If he's going to be cleared probably around the beginning of May, end of April, which that is the news that Kirby Smart brought, that is a nine-month injury. He'll be cleared right after spring practice. Uh, He's been rehabbing, obviously, since August. And I, I didn't think he'd be ready this fast, to be honest with you, based off of our conversation at the Orange Bowl. It doesn't matter. He's obviously ready ready earlier than I thought he was going to be. So that's what Kirby had to say about that, and which means he and Etienne, I think, will be your starting running backs. Uh, Robinson looked good his freshman year, had a really big game against Auburn. He ends up with over 300 yards and a few touchdowns on 30, 68 carries. Sorry, I wanted to make sure I gave that number off the top of my head. So productive in that third back role, which is what he played in 2022, doesn't play in 2023, 
He'll be healthy. So they didn't have him healthy last year either. Roger Robinson's healthy and has played now. He ended up being George's third leading rusher. So he has a year of experience. Andrew Paul should be healthy now. Now he'll be two years removed from his ACL tear. And he's gotten some snaps. Cash Jones, touchdowns and snaps. So this this room is a lot more experienced than it was a year ago. And if it's healthy, that's already more healthy than last year. And if you think about it, who's the only one that's dinged up? Is Branson Robinson. So... They could be entering this season with a full arsenal and obviously with backs overall that have had more experience. Kendall Milton, obviously, four-year guy. Same thing with Dejan Edwards. Trevor Etienne, he, if he's a lead back, this is year three for him. Same thing with Branson Robinson. But he has two years of being a heavy rotation back and has some production at Florida, at Georgia's rival. Over 700, over 700 yards in each year. About 14 touchdowns over the course of two years. 15 touchdowns. So he has production he is a bowling ball type of running back. Small guy, really. That's one of the things I noticed at practice. I was like, whoa, that's Trevor. He's small. I knew. I looked on the roster. I've seen I've seen him, I've seen him in person. I've played. I, or not played. I didn't play. But I've seen Trevor Etienne in person. But I had never really been on the field in Jacksonville. So up close, I didn't get to see. The close, you know, I don't know, 30 yards away, maybe-ish. About as how far you get to be. I mean, we're just off on the sideline. They're on the other side of the field. So 50 yards max is what I'm – and he's just small. And it's noticeable when he's next to all the other running backs. Who It's not the, the biggest room, but when you're next to a Roger Robinson who's a big running back, it makes Trevor Etienne look small. The freshman. Only one of the three freshmen running back enrolled early. So only got a peek. And I want to make sure I confirm what his number was because we did get a new roster with new numbers. Right, so Chauncey Bowens is going to end up wearing number 30. Where, where did he go? I, I've lost Chauncey Bowens on this list. I've lost Chauncey Bowens on this list. Whatever. Chauncey Bowens is wearing number in the 30s or 40s. Got a good look at him. He looks pretty quick. Um... He's been described as a little bit more of a power back as well, someone who could be a little bit more balanced. The other two did not enroll. It's driving me nuts that I, I couldn't find where uh, where he was on this list, but Nate Frazier and Dwight Phillips Jr., they had not enrolled. Ranked higher than Chauncey Bowens, right? So, And Nate Frazier being one of the two best running backs according to all of the recruiting services. So those guys haven't joined the team yet. Dwight Phillips Jr. being more of a think about – James Cook's role, but more like Arian Smith in terms of speed and body type. So it will he be a true running back? Will he be more of just an off as a threat? Will he play a little bit of receiver? Definitely someone I think that they could use in the kick return game. Someone that Dean went out there and watched uh, over over uh, at, at his high school. When you add those guys, you would think that they may get some garbage time snaps. But if you add all three freshman running back into the picture... And assuming that they're healthy, they have Trevor Etienne, Branson Robinson, Roger Robinson, Cash Jones, Andrew Paul. That's five. All guys who have played college football. And then you add the other three. They have eight capable running backs, right? Three of them, maybe we don't know, but there's at least a little bit of promise to them, right? And that's part of why they get recruited to the University of Georgia and they make these teams. I'm taking one last chance to find him. He's just disappeared on this list to me. That's wild. There he is, 33. He was at the top of the list, and I thought he was in the middle. 33. Two threes. So Chauncey Bowens will be wearing number 33 out there. You add the walk-ins in, and they got 10 guys. They didn't have eight guys, right? Because they didn't even have three guys that they really trusted at the beginning of the season. Right, Roger Robinson being that third guy, and I believe he was the second leading rusher after two games for Georgia. He, he ends up getting dinged up as well, but this Georgia running back room, you get my point. All right, I feel like I've hit on all this, but top to bottom, healthier, more talented? I don't know about that, but healthier. So I think things will be better. And because of the offensive line situation, which again is going to be really good, and you have a really good quarterback like Carson Beck, it's looking like a good situation for Georgia's offense next year. Thanks for hearing me out.